blow that made receivers fear him. Martial arts, black belt, fifth degree. He'd level a fan. He did level a fan. I'm looking to hurt people on this football field kind of intimidation. No! No! He would run you down. He would hunt you down. They're the last guys you want to see in a dark alley. He was just going to do everything he could to make you feel pain until he heard the whistle. And the first guys you run behind in a bar fight. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. Wow. <laughs> that guy's really mean. You can't hurt this. I'm a machine, son. Have you ever seen that? Guy gets hit so hard as his equipment comes off. He got separated from his helmet. I've never seen that. Take it to the house, take it! They're the top ten most feared tacklers of all time, and only the best at intimidating, bullying, and scaring the heck out of their opponents were even considered for our list. Hey, Sula, you better hope I never get back in there. I will kick your ass! The number ten most feared tackler of all time. John Lynch. John Lynch definitely belongs on there. Lynch was fearless. You made sure you located 47. Lynch would come up and, and take your head off. We go helmet to helmet. My eyes were crossed. My knees were buckling. He's like, hello, John, how are you? John Lynch loves to hit. It was fastballs in high school, ball carriers in the NFL, and no one is off limits. The Bears had a tight end named John Allred, who happened to be John's brother-in-law. We talked about that all week, that he was going to play his brother-in-law. They grew up together, best of friends, happened to marry his sister. Well, John Allred caught a pass against the Bucks, and Lynch came at him like a freight train. It hit him so hard, he, he knocked him down, he knocked him out. And his brother-in-law was laying prone on the field, and Lynch dusted himself off and went back to his position. I went, oh, man. <laughs> When he came off, I remember looking at him, I said, Linda's really going to be mad at you right about now. <laughs> In addition to family members, some of our number 10 tacklers' biggest hits came against the biggest names in the NFL. Barry Sanders, the former Lions running back, who no one could ever get a good angle on. John Lynch laid a hit on him once that Barry Sanders said was the hardest he'd ever been hit on a football field. Barry Sanders came off tackle, and he had a little bit of wiggle room, and John got him. That'll probably be one of his greatest moments, tackling Barry Sanders in the open field. Another time, Marshall Falk on a Monday night football game in Tampa. I never had a guy hit me as much as John hit me in one game. Lynch hit him so hard, it was almost like a seismic blow. You could just feel the stadium shake. Woo! John Lynch! Good leg, Lynch! Man, he caught me and must have flipped me over, and the only thing I could do was just tell him to keep bringing it, knowing that he was bringing it about as hard as I wanted him to. It was one of those things where you, you watched it, absorbed it, and then looked at the people around you. So did that really happen? My gosh, look at how hard that was. Hey, defense, let's go! John was the guy that shouldn't have been. A lot of people was telling him, you're going to play in the league, you're too slow. None of that resonated to John. And if you ask John, John would tell you, hey, I was the best safety ever. If John hits you, <laughs> you would feel as if he was the best safety. Did you get a big hit on that one? Down here was that Hardy. I got one. The guy was holding him up. And you just KO'd him? Yeah. The safety position lends itself to hitting. And if you're in the right defense, it's going to allow you to do what you do, which is just fly to the football and be fearless and risking life and limb to separate a guy from the football. Woo! Did he stick it to him on that one? John Lynch has been in the right systems with the right attitude. Uh, yeah, I'd say he's one of the best hitters of all time. Coming up, which fear tackler looks scarier in the parking lot than on the playing field? I think he did two sets of bench presses. I think he did two sets of curls, lit a cigarette, and walked.
looks like he's out. They provide anything but safety to an opposing receiver. After all, safeties can deliver the nastiest hits on the football field. Defensive linemen, I wouldn't fear as tackers because they don't get up enough speed to hurt you. A feared tacker to me would be a guy who's coming at full speed and there's no way to avoid it. I wouldn't want to see them chasing me. Out of bounds would be my best friend if, if I saw that. But some simply weren't scary enough to make our list of fear tacklers. We've commented a number of times how good Roy Williams has been this season in the open field. Roy Williams, Mark Carrier, and Chuck Cecil were close. Even Rodney Harrison, the most fine player in league history, didn't make our countdown. Yeah! He's insane. If you just watch 37, if you put an ISO cam on him, you could sell that separately as an NFL Films product. One of the three safeties who made the cut comes in at number nine. Nine. The number nine most feared tackler of all time, Steve Atwater. Atwater was, uh, I mean, he was an intimidating player. He made some of the best plays uh, that I've ever seen a safety make. Goes on, goes on. Your first impulse was, boy, that must have been the middle linebacker. I can't even realize. No, it's safety. One of the biggest and best safeties in football is Denver's menacing Steve Atwater. After winning Rookie of the Year in 1989, Atwater exploded onto the scene with a dynamite hit in the second game of his second season. Certainly the one that everybody remembers is Christian Okoye. 260 pounds as a running back and ran about a 4-4-40. Oh, boy, he is too big and too fast to be playing running back in the NFL. Christian Okoye was just running roughshod through the NFL and was just trampling everybody. An incredible run with about five guys on his oh. back by the Nigerian nightmare, Christian Okoye. He got a Okoye at fullback. I don't give a he's playing wide receiver. Hey, Christian's still in. But Okoye's reign of terror ended with a single collision. Right, we got lead on his ass this time, baby. Here's the handoff. Up the middle of Okoye. I mean, it was, it was loud. That was one of the greatest hits that I've ever seen. And a Christian Okoye, for the first time in his life, went backwards. He stood over the guy and talked to him. That one hit made Steve Atwater's career and diminished Christian Okoye's reputation as one of the great power running backs in the game. I mean, that's the kind of impact, literally, the impact Steve Atwater had. Play hard, play smart, and knock their ass off every chance you get, baby. There was a time where it was Atwater and Mecklenburg and Rulon Jones, I mean, they had pretty darn good defense. And uh, Atwater, he was one of the big components of that defense. What up, man? Way to bring it. Our defensive corners did a tremendous job of putting him in position where he could be like a linebacker in the box. And he filled that role extremely well. Got it, 6'3", 6'4", 220, playing safety. Okay, don't get mad at me, Tito. Keep your head on the swim. So yeah, he was feared. Atwater's impact wasn't limited to big hits. Our number nine most feared tackler amassed over a thousand tackles in his ten years with the Broncos. He was a sure tackler, and that's what a safety does, because he uses the last line of defense. And he's a guy that's got to get the guy down somehow, some way. Here we go, and that's what Steve was good at. Atwater earned eight Pro Bowl appearances. but made his biggest hits on the big stage of Super Bowl 32. When he came up to hit somebody, there was a violent collision, and he usually got there right on time. He was Denver's most dominant defender, forcing a fumble, and helping to KO the Packers' comeback hopes. Denver's gonna win it! Are you kidding me? Steve was, uh, you know, was a great player. Uh, a tremendous tackler. The number eight most feared tackler of all time, Jack Lambert. Let's take a look at the toughest of them all, Jack Lambert. Steelers linebacker Jack Lambert was an icon of the Steel City. 
who won the number eight spot on our list and a bust in the Hall of Fame. And the amazing thing about Jack Lambert is he wasn't very big. One of the Steelers uh, administrative people looked at him, said, who's that? They said, that's our number two pick. And he goes, well, another wasted pick. The only thing wasted was Lambert's opponent. How could he do that? He's, he's a skinny rail. I think he did two sets of bench presses. I think he did two sets of curls, lit a cigarette, and walked. Jack was one of those guys that was in on a lot of tackles. That'll cool your ass off. That hole was there. He was in the hole. He made the tackle. None better than Jack Lambert to do that. And Jack Lambert was a wonderful football player. There's a big difference between athletes and football players. Lambert had an instinct for the game that was uh, unique. It came from the floor up. I mean, he, he tried to run through you. No one wanted to be hit by Jack Lambert, but everybody was hit by Jack Lambert. He just had a relentless competitiveness. You could see it in his eyes. He was an uh, enforcer. Jack Lambert is so mean, he doesn't even like himself. I don't care that, that my opponents like me. I care that they respect me, though. With those steely eyes, with the Dracula fangs. He looks like Count Dracula in cleats. And nobody's approach to football is more basic. He had the look. You know, everybody knows the Lambert look. Limited teeth. And I turned around and I looked at the guy. And what I realized, when he took his thing out, he didn't have his teeth up front. And I went, wow. <laughs> so, I got really mean. <laughs> he was a guy that was always trying to jaw with other people, but uh, he backed it up. Lambert had some choice words for Ram running back Wendell Tyler a full transcript of which is available for mature audiences only. He was just going to do everything he could to make you feel pain until he heard the whistle. But our number eight tackler's most notorious play occurred after the whistle blew. On to sunny Super Bowl X against the Dallas Cowboys. Craziest game I ever watched. At that point in the game, the Cowboys had kind of had the better of it early in the game. Roy Jarella attempts a field goal and misses it. Cliff Harris, who's rushing, sees the kick go wide, and he pats Jarella on the helmet as if to say, hey, thanks. And he goes back and he grabs Cliff Harris and throws Cliff Harris on the ground. Jack Lambert was after Cliff Harris. Jack Lambert kind of put him in his place. Well, now Lambert's walking by. Here's Harris telling him something and grabs the kicker. And Lambert at 6'5", works him over. Nobody came to Cliff Harris's defense on the Dallas side. Did it change the energy on the field? Absolutely it did. They became the intimidators again. The Steelers won the game, and Lambert won a spot on our list of fear tacklers. Coming up, Howie Long, George Atkinson, or Jack Tatum. Which Raider bad boy wreaked enough havoc to make our list? Just a total disregard for anybody around him. The other guy's body, his own body. Bang. You know, he was just so physical, and he was a ball of muscle. When we determined our leaders of the pack, a mad dog just missed our list. What are you going to do? I mean, your reaction is, what? You hate it. No, not that mad dog. My curse, you have it for you. <laughs> mad dog. But if the mad dog is mad at us for leaving him off our most feared list, we're not alone. Never has a man been unhappier the day of a game. He hated Dar Day, the American flag, his own teammates. Even Johnny Unitas. I almost punched him out. He'd level a fan. You ask that fan if Mike Curtis isn't one of the top ten hardest hitters. It's an absolute injustice against all things holy that Mike Curtis is not on the top ten list. But while we didn't make the mad dog the pick of the litter, another Baltimore bad boy made our list. The number seven most feared tackler of all time, Ray Lewis. I, mean, I think Ray has to be inside the five. No, I'll tell you why he probably shouldn't be higher. Ray Lewis was at its best when he wasn't touched. Feared or overrated? I hear all the negative things, right? Ray Lewis has heard it all before, but no one can argue the guy can deliver a crushing blow. 
He just likes hitting guys, hitting anything that moves with the football, and even when the player didn't have football, he wants to hit it. We're hitting anything move today now. We're hitting anything move today. He reminds me of Blankus. He's 250, 255 pounds. When he first came in, he was running 4 4 4 5 40. I mean, that's unbelievable. What's the run, Jake? Hey. Spill it, Jake, spill it! As he's matured as a football player, he's also added now that anticipation. Don't move! Come on! That ability to size up a situation and actually see it before it happens. It makes him one of the most ferocious tacklers in the game. Ray keeps his own top 10 list in his basement. For those on it, however, it's a makeshift hall of shame. Man, Ray would meet you in the backfield and knock the snot out of you. He was playing at the Pro Bowl and I put on his jersey. Just don't hit me. Peace. Another jersey on that wall belongs to Eddie George. Now, Eddie George, big tough back, Pro Bowl back, and he was a different player against Ray Lewis. Yeah, I'm not saying he just rolled down and curled up, but you could tell that Eddie George was intimidated, and Eddie George wanted no part of Ray Lewis when you got to a certain point in the game. He took it away from Eddie George. It was a wrestling match out there, and who won? My man Ray Lewis. But our number seven tackler isn't picky. Pro bowlers weren't the only ones to take his best shots. Here's Bam Morris, this big back. He's got a full head of steam. And Bam tried to show what an athlete he was by hurdling a, a player in front of him. And all of a sudden, Ray just goes over one guy and boom. Ray Lewis didn't leap, he exploded. He blew Bam up. And it's like an 18-wheeler getting 18 flats all at once because he just goes right down. And it was one of those collective, Ooh. because you know that hurt. Ray Lewis brings a certain flair to the game. With the tackling comes a lot of talking. Get off the field! Get off the field! Come on, Ray. I told you I'm coming! Ray has that rare ability of being able to talk and back it up almost simultaneously. The ball snapped, Ray's talking right up to the point he's tackling. Paco, I'm going to knock him out now! I'm going to catch him in a minute! Ray's going to tell you he's going to hit you. He's going to hit you, and he's going to tell you afterwards. I just hit you, and you come back here, I'm going to hit you again. Fourth down! Y'all going to have to play football in a minute! <laughs> Fuck off! Fuck off! He's that kid who, when you had to play a high school game, and you showed up, and you looked across the field, he was the kid who became a man before everybody else. You can't hurt this! I'm a machine, jerk! He believes he's better than everybody else. And once he got to the NFL level, He's still more of a man than everybody he's going to tackle. So when they meet, Ray has that psychological advantage of, I was a man first, I'm still more of a man, and when you get up, I'll be even more of a man. The number six most feared tackler of all time, Jack Tatum. The assassin, Jack Tatum. He's only number six? He should be number one. Number six on your list as feared, number one as most dangerous. Jack Tatum played nine of his ten seasons with the Oakland Raiders. A member of one of the best secondaries ever, Tatum made his mark as the unit's enforcer. I play a hard-hitting game. I just like to uh, have receivers think about me a little bit while they're trying to catch the ball. Football was different back then. A lot of his hits were legal that would not be legal today. Jack Tatum was a great tackler, and some called him a dirty tackler, and I, I, I won't do that. I, I don't think he is. I think it's a big factor if you can get a receiver thinking about you, but then he can't be concentrating on you and the ball at the same time. Jack Tatum wanted to be known as the one guy to ever play the game, that if you come near me, I'm not only just going to hit you, you know, I'm going to make you regret that you ever played professional football. He had that innate ability to explode on a ball carrier. As a hitter, you hit beyond your target. It's kind of like dimensions. You hit two guys back, so that takes you through. He perfected that. Football is a collision sport, and Jack Tatum was as good a collider that I've seen in, in a football uniform. And the fact that he was a secondary guy and could deal out that kind of punishment, you know, I tip my hat. He's not a criminal to me. He's a heck of a football player. Some can argue about his technique, but all agree our number six tackler's hits were vicious, and everyone seems to have their favorite. My number one Jack Tatum hit of all times was we were playing the Denver Broncos, and Riley Odoms, who's about 6'5", 260 or so, comes across the field. All of a sudden, whop! 
And Riley goes on the ground and lays there and his head, the eyeballs went back up in his head. And I said to myself, he killed him. Luckily Riley was okay, he helped him off the field. I will never say that anybody out there in the NFL is trying to kill someone. But if there was somebody, that would be Jack Tatum. We're playing the Raiders in the dome. It was fourth and one. Earl Campbell had the football. And he and Earl collide on, the, on a sweep by Earl around the right end. And it was a collision that was heard outside the dome. And the two guys hit and collided. And they just it was like that, like two rams or bulls or something. And then they just fell into the end zone for a touchdown. Both of them knocked out. That was the most vicious hit that I, that I have ever witnessed in a lot of years of football. And I know about four months later, Bum had traded for Jack Tatum. Not many people had hit her on one-on-one -on -one like that. From the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena, California, it is Super Bowl XI. But maybe Tatum's biggest hit came on football's biggest stage when, in Super Bowl XI, he launched into the Vikings' Sammy White. Great hit, wasn't it? That right there alone should put Jack at number one. Have you ever seen that in football? Guy gets hit so hard as the equipment comes off and rolls. He got separated from his helmet. I've never seen that. He makes contact. That person goes down and he's looking over. Number six, reevaluate that. I don't know who you got. I don't even want to know who you got. One, two, three, four, and five. Coming up, the one member of our top ten you probably have never heard of. Who's he? He was a guy that you had to watch out for at all times. He kept the chart of who he knocked out of games. I mean, knocked them out. He broke jaws. He broke cheeks. He gave guys concussions. I mean, he was just brutal. Continue our countdown of the top 10 most feared tacklers of all time. Here's the list so far. Number 10. His brother-in-law was laying prone on the field. Brothers-in-law beware. It's John Lynch. Number 9. Think Steve Atwater doesn't belong on this list? Just ask the Nigerian nightmare. That was one of the greatest hits that I've ever seen. Number 8. Why did Jack Lambert play without some of his teeth? People were too afraid to tell him they were missing. Wow. I got really mean. Number seven. If you didn't know Ray Lewis was on this list. Fuck off, I'm gonna knock him out now. I'm knock sure he'll out. tell you. We're hitting anything move today. Number six. The assassin. Jack Tatum would take your head off or tackle you. Whichever came first. He got separated from his helmet. <laughs> and now, the number five most feared tackler of all time, Hardy Brown. Hardy Brown? Who's he? The name Hardy Brown may be obscure to the casual fan. All I know is Hardy Nickerson. Hardy, Hardy, but to those who knew him, he was a true legend. Hardy Brown made his name as a linebacker for the 49ers in the 50s. But he didn't make many friends thanks to his physics-defying hits. At 6 feet 180 pounds, he wasn't really awesome in stature. He was a little guy for, a, for basically a fly-around linebacker. But boy, he learned how to put that hump into you from Tulsa, and he hit. Hard-hitting Hardy Brown hurls his hefty hulk into the ball carrier, and it's a fumble. Hardy was just a guy who knew how to use his shoulder. He'd hit you with the shoulder to the head just by throwing his shoulder out there and not using his arms. It's like a boxer. He could just knock them out. Take one step forward, keep your back straight, keep your eyes open, and shoot. Catching a guy when he was unprotected, he'd just drive his shoulder into his face or, or whatever was handy and do incredible damage. He broke jaws, he broke cheeks, he gave guys concussions. I mean, he was just brutal. That's it. That's all there is to it, huh? Yeah. Hardy came up uh, through some hard times. Had it rough his whole life. Perhaps Hardy Brown's violent nature was shaped at the Masonic home for orphans in Fort Worth, Texas. It was a rough and tumble place. My father was murdered, and they sent me and my brother and my sister out there. And that's when we started fooling around football. Football was where our number five tackler channeled his frustrations. Hardy just had this mean streak in him that he used uh, to his advantage. He was going to make people pay for it. 
kept the chart of who he knocked out of games. I mean, knocked them out. You see these westerns, you see guys have niches on their belts for guys they'd killed. Well, Hardy Brown has niches on his belt for all the jock straps he got. Over the years, I guess I've got 75 or 80 knockouts playing professional football. No, I don't feel sorry for anybody I hit. There were all sorts of accusations because of the effectiveness of his hit. He must be wearing something in his shoulder pads, a metal plate or something extra. Officials would check to make sure. People always said that I was the dirtiest man that ever lived in football. Opponents were putting bounties on his head to get him out of the game before he put two or three of their teammates out of the game. The Rams had a $500 deal for my getting knocked out of the game. And the guy that told me was Paul Berry. And I said, Paul, hit me and I'll fake and go out and we'll split that 250 apiece. It's intercepted by Hardy Brown to the 49er. And the dirtiest man in the NFL has a clean pass to the end zone for the score. When Bob Waterfield got through playing for the Rams... Now meet that terrific titan, Bob number 7 Waterfield. One day he's crossing some street, a Volkswagen hit him. And they said, you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm all right. But I thought Hardy Brown was in town. Hardy Brown was a dangerous man. He was the guy that you had to watch out for at all times. The number four most feared tackler of all time, Ronnie Lott. Ronnie thought that making a big hit in a game could change the momentum of a game. And he was the one guy that I could think of that did it constantly throughout his career. No hit was bigger than the one Lot unleashed in Super Bowl 23. The give to Woods, leaving the outside, cuts back in, and oh, he nailed. <laughs> Tore him loose, man. I can still feel it. That hit on Icky Woods set the tone. And you can see the whole team jump up and down like they just won the game, and it rallied that football team. San Francisco went on to win its third championship of the decade, and the number four most feared tackler of all time was born. Everybody sold out this week. Everybody. Damn, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. to tackle me. Get real. You're the NFL's baddest dude. There has never been a quarterback with the knack for arriving at the precise moment that the receiver touched the ball. And then he is clobbered. He wasn't one of those little ankle biters. Or Ronnie was a guy that just threw his whole body into it. He loved the impact. He would try to run through people. You gotta give a woo -woo. I want everybody in the stands to go woo. Everybody stands up when they see woo. Martial arts, black belt, fifth degree, I'm looking to hurt people on this football field kind of intimidation. Ronnie gave me just sort of a little turned up grin and then went wow! And I mean just <laughs> dropped me. Oh my gosh! If he's number four, then they probably didn't pull too many guys that he hit. You mean there's somebody ahead of Ronnie Lott? Give me a break. Because mm -hmm. anybody that he really hit, they'd have him number one. One of the men who transformed an organization from perennial laughingstock to instant Super Bowl winner. Oh, Super Bowl! Back to back. His ability to get the team to rise up was always extraordinary because he would lead by example. No event was more inspirational than the time our number four most feared tackler chose to have his pinky amputated so he wouldn't miss a playoff game. It was like, well, of course Ronnie isn't going to miss a football game over something as silly as a bad finger. You know, Ronnie's just lucky it was just the tip of his finger. Because he probably would have given him the, the same answer if it was his forearm. It was clear the game was important to him. Competing and doing your best was important. The guy lived and died to win, and that's why he sacrificed everything, his body. And Ronnie said, if that's what it takes to win, that's what it takes to win. And he's blasted hit of the season. Coming up on Top 10, a fear tackler who made the opposition want to change their drawers. Scared the hell out of the offensive tackles. We all went. He was intense on the point of being a madman. No
position has produced more feared tacklers than linebacker. Here are a few bone crushers who just missed the cut. I like this kind of party! With a single look, Samurai Mike made opponents quiver with fright. While Ray Nitschke struck fear with a snarl and an old-fashioned blow to the head. Ooh, what a hit! I'm surprised he held on to his teeth. With his relentless style, this junior made plenty of ball characters say, ow. Get out of here, baby! Derek Brooks built his reputation one hit at a time. Boy, did he get drilled! While all of these linebackers were fear tacklers, none of them could spread terror like the next player on our list. The number three most feared tackler of all time, Lawrence Taylor. Well, we went to the Meadowlands, and here comes 56 running out the tunnel. And we all went, we're watching the film. We think we're looking at some guy that's maybe like 6'1 or 6'2, because nobody 6'4 can run around like that. That is a looking in, over a pass, intercepted, he might go all the way! It wasn't so much that he played linebacker as it is that he stalked his prey. He was always chasing the ball, he never stopped. But a big ball of bam! You gotta have a love to hit. I mean, I like to hit. They're guys they talk about when they deliver a blow, it's like they got a ton of bricks in their butt. Now, he was one of those guys, except he had two tons. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazed dogs and have some fun. You look at all those things, and then you just throw in 80 pounds of intensity. Yeah, he was intense on the point of being a madman. Hey, Sula, you better hope I never get back in there. I'll kick your ass. He was a one-man wrecking crew at the quarterback. He came off that edge, and he came off that edge with an attitude. That had to scare the hell out of a lot of quarterbacks. John, I got to be better than this. LT he scared the hell out of the offensive tackles. I was afraid of what the net result could be. If he beats you for three sacks, your life is crap. You didn't worry about a sack nearly as much as you worried about the fact that besides being separated from his senses, your guy was going to be separated from the ball. You know, these, these teeth aren't mine. These are bonded. Thank you. I'm getting them veneered now. I mean, I can get to improve my smile. Busted chops were nothing compared to the busted leg that ended Theismann's career. Viewed by a nationwide audience, the gruesome injury only added to Taylor's madman mystique. I remember it like it was yesterday. What jumped out at me was, first of all, was the sound. You could actually hear the brakes, the two muzzle gunshots. And then the suddenness with which it broke. It really went like a breadstick. Quickly, Lawrence Taylor is up, saying Theismann is hurt. It was a, a scary moment, but it kind of showed you the power that he has. And, you know, up until the moment that he broke the leg, he probably was intending on, you know, breaking him in half. And then he did it. It's like, oh, what, what have I done? It was even a little bit beyond his comprehension. Opponents weren't the only ones afraid of our number three most feared tackler. Taylor's teammates had to be wary too. When I first came into the Giants, there's one thing they did not have here was enthusiasm. I love showing my enthusiasm for the game. If I'm close to him, I'm going to jump on and, you know, try to wring his neck. LT was more than just a fierce hitter. He was an unstoppable force. Because of his ability to demolish an offense, number 56 earned the number three spot on our list. He made offensive coordinators stay up nights saying, we cannot allow 56 to dominate this game. We would set up our boards in game preparation. We used to have all those little letters and symbols. And then right over here, with a big circle around it, was number 56. You better damn well pay attention to what's going on right over here or else it's going to get you. Holy smokes! Talk about putting it in your face! And everything they tried to do usually met little success. Yeah, LT, man, he was something. Coming up on Top 10, what feared tackler was afraid to fly? On Friday, after the team would practice, he would get on a train and take it to wherever the team was playing that weekend. Before we kick off the rest of our list, let's take a look at some of the least feared tacklers of all time. Kickers. I think bowlers are better athletes than these guys are for sure. 
Adam Vinatieri went Super Bowling five times, but he never mastered the lost art of tackling. Touchdown! Nobody touched him! Garo Yepremian's imperfect tackling almost cost the Dolphins a perfect season. When he didn't have the guts to throw his body at Mike Bess, I just couldn't believe anybody could be that yellow. Martin Gramatica could hit kicks with pinpoint accuracy, but he couldn't hit opponents. One man to beat. They're not going to get him. Some god-awful tackling. Shameful. Gotta be kidding. Embarrassing. Gramatica wasn't Automatica as a tackler, unlike the next man on our list. <laughs> The number two most feared tackler of all time, Night Train Lane. Number two. He could deliver a blow that made receivers fear him. Look out, Daniel! Oh, touchdown! He's one of the few players that hurt you every time he tackles you. The pass is good, but bang! They never knew for sure where he was going to be or what he was going to do. The play is diagnosed perfectly by Night Train Lane. Receivers don't like to go across the middle. I don't think they wanted to go across the middle with Night Train. Definitely the best hit in the corner I've ever seen. He certainly would be up there in the top five if you're talking about lists. Well, Night Train's signature move was take your head off. A rugged defense has been the trademark of Detroit Lion teams. If you don't hit him right, you break your elbow, your arm or something, you know. So you got to really get him right in front of you and hit him with that four to rip him up. The night train necktie was just what we call a clothesline today. You have to understand, back then, a lot of things weren't illegal. When he came into the league, they had just started to introduce face masks. And he figured out early on that if you grabbed a guy here and yanked him down, you possibly could put him out of the game. Holy mackerel! We finally brought in the rule that eliminated the clothesline and the face mask. I mean, those two rules were really a direct result of the way night train played. Night Train seemed like the perfect nickname to match Lane's fearsome style, but legend has it that moniker was given for a less dreadful reason. The reason he was called Night Train was that he hated to fly. On Friday, after the team would practice, he would get on the Night Train and take it to wherever the team was playing that weekend. While our number two most feared tackler preferred to make ball carriers earn their wings, this locomotive could pull the Lions to victory in a variety of ways. His 14 interceptions in a single season is still a record. Night Train had the ability to do the, the bait and switch. He would play off, the opposing quarterback would look and see, oh geez, the guy's uncovered, and at that moment, Night Train would, would break for the ball. That's why he got so many interceptions. Body United and the Colts try to come from behind, but big Night Train Lane derails the attempt. I always played from outside in, so I could see the quarterback. I always felt they just throw the ball to the open spot. I would go get it. But while Night Train's picks are in the record books, he made the most impact when he made impact. Coming up, who had us thinking number one and everyone else thinking number two? If I had to play him, I'd crap the bed. I should have used the bathroom before I came out here. Ooh. Before we reveal the most feared tackler of all time, let's recap the list so far. Number 10, John Lynch takes out a Marshall. Lynch hit him so hard, you just feel the stadium shake. Good leg, Lynch. Number 9, Steve Atwater puts an end to the nightmare. And a Christian Okoye, for the first time in his life, went backwards. Number 8. Jack Lambert inspires the Steelers to victory. Jack Lambert was after Cliff Harris. Did it change the energy on the field? Absolutely it did. They became the intimidators again. Number seven, Ray Lou turns Bam into rum. Ray Lewis exploded. He blew Bam up. Number six, the assassin always gets his man. Number six, reevaluate that. Number five, Hardy Brown's shoulder is a lethal weapon. Hardy Brown was a dangerous man. Number four, Ronnie Lott put a icky on ice. Ronnie Lott really put a belt on it. Number three. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs. Have some fun. LG's bark is as bad as his bite. It wasn't so much that he played linebacker as it is that he stalked his prey. Number two, Night Train hangs him high. You have to understand, back then, a lot of things weren't illegal. 
And now, our number one most feared tackler of all time, Dick Butkus. Number one. Number one. Yes, I totally agree with that. Dick Butkus, the most feared tackler who ever lived. Dick Butkus was the most frightening linebacker who ever played pro football. He was an eight-time pro bowler in nine years. And he played the last four years basically with no knees. Oh, look at his knee. It's gone, man. Look at it. And they still couldn't stop him. Buckus was playing at, what, 250, 260 at a time when the other linebackers were 30 or 40 pounds lighter. What he was really great at was taking the ball away from you. Buck has set the career record for defensive fumble recoveries, but he was even more skilled at stripping offenses of their dignity. He scared you, he hurt you, and he brought you down. Now well, this guy looks like he spent an afternoon playing against Dick Buckus. He hit you where it hurt, right in your heart. I want to just let them know that they've been hit. And when they get up, they don't have to look to see who was uh, that hit them. You had the feeling that he was serious, that it wasn't just a game. That when he wanted to drill you, he really wanted to drill you and probably would want to drill you when the game was over. When he hit you, you stayed hit. I mean, he hit with violence. Violence is his lifestyle. I think with Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte, I got a kind of a charge when that head come rolling down the stairs. I kind of like to, to sit there and watch it, project those things happening on a football field and not to me. There were more people in the training room after we played the Bears than any other opponent. Everybody was bleeding, bruised, marked up. I remember looking at one of our assistant trainers. I said, was it that tough out there? And he looked at me and he said, Butkus. There are no victories in a bout with Butkus. Just watching him out there had to scare some of these guys. If I had to play him, I'd crap the bed. I would go caca in my pants. When God created the bears, he created human beings who looked like bears. Butkus was a bear who walked like a man. <laughs> Butkus grunted a lot and growled a lot when he was back up the line. He never took a shower after the game. He just went in front of his locker and would lie down and lick himself. People say he was mean, ass, and then, you know, he would bite people and different things like that. There's a lot of offensive guys who will tell you that they felt somebody biting on my finger. And it'd be Butkus trying to take another chunk out of an offense. The official came running in and said, uh, Butkus out. He bit my finger. Dick Butkus once said, some people were made to be doctors, others to be lawyers. I was made to play football. When we found out he was taking Shakespeare, that threw me back a little bit. Shakespeare's words could well have immortalized Dick Butkus. But Dick Butkus wanted to expand his horizons and he always hated being called, you know, the dumb jack. Our number one tackler never mastered Shakespeare's plays. He was horrible. But plays by Butkus inspired a generation of art and poetry. Roses are red and violets are blue. If you've got any sense, you'll keep Butkus away from you. Our top tackler preyed on blood, sweat, and fears. So why is he number one? We couldn't rank him any higher. Dick Butkus was the personification of defensive intimidation in pro football. Simply out to punish him. That's what he wanted to do. That's what he thought football was all about. There was no one better than Dick Buckus. This is one list no one should argue with, but it's generated two responses, fear and outrage. My top guy on my list was always Joe Schmidt. Rodney Harrison should be on, on that list. Rodney Harrison would change and infuse the tempo of a game probably better than John Lynch would. It's an absolute injustice against all things holy in Baltimore that Mike Curtis is not on the top ten list. Chris Hamburger was a feared tackler because he never tackled below the jawline. Bednarik, Chuck Bednarik, of course that hit that he put on uh, Frank Gifford. Ray Nitschke. Nitschke. He was outstanding. I played against Ray for five years. It's outrage. If, if, this, if this didn't make it, you kidding me. No matter where you stand, there's no denying fans will always be passionate about the hitmen who seek and destroy.